What's up, people? It's your boy PutMeGee here, back with another Magic the Gathering video. And today is a super special day because this is the first look at Throne of Eldraine standard. Now, uh, I have to thank Wizards of the Coast for this sweet opportunity to do an early access event as a uh, content creator. So it's, they've given me a um, you know a one day account with a, all the cards that I need to build decks for a day. And so I'm gonna be playing a lot, and the videos you're gonna be seeing, if you're a subscriber of mine, you'll be seeing videos for the next week or two, uh, Throne of Eldra and stuff, and that's all from one day of work. So uh, if you like what you see, be sure to drop a like because I'm putting a lot of work in on this. So uh, let's get into this. The first deck I'm gonna be playing, I'm really excited about this. This is Big Iron Crag Red. Now, Iron Crag Feet is, a, is an interesting card. I don't know if it's that good, but uh, I'm excited to build around it. It's an interesting card from Throne of Eldraine that says, add seven red. You can cast only one more spell this turn. So it costs four mana, it gives you seven. So basically what this is gonna allow us to do is ramp really fast from, from so we go from four mana, on turn four we're able to cast huge stuff. Now the good thing about this is that uh, we have some big, big dangerous threats in red here and uh, <laughs> This is going to be a really dangerous turn if we can get this off, right? So uh, I will say one bad thing about this deck is it's very it's a very costly thing to try to pull off, right? Because we're putting two cards into one. So we have to make sure we've got, like, you know, we have to make sure we're able to actually make this work. So we're, we have some other options here. We're, we're a little bit controlly to get to the late game just in case we never pull off this Iron Crag Feet thing. But the reason we're playing Iron Crag Feet here, so it adds seven red mana and we can only cast one more spell. So we want to cast this and then one huge spell on the opponent. So we've got a lot of big stuff here. First of all, let's talk about our big creature, Dracuseth Maw of Flames. This is a legendary dragon, a 7-7 seven, seven for seven mana. So this is right at the upper cap of what we can do with Iron Crag Feet. This is about the most value we can get out of that card. Okay, this is a flyer for with uh, a 7-7 seven, seven flyer and whenever he attacks it deals four damage to any target three damage to each of up to two other targets So this is going to be a ton of damage on turn five, right? So if we get this down on the field in turn four we can uh, start attacking with it turn five and either uh, Take out some of our opponents threats or just deal damage a bunch of damage to them, right? So this is a really really nice card for us Previously, the only way to get this out that early was using um, like reanimator, uh, Sultai reanimator stuff, but in red, now we have a way to get this onto the field early. So this is actually going to be pretty valuable. Some other things we're doing in the big slot here, we've got Chandra Awakened Inferno, and this one is most important, I think, because it's not counterable. So in a lot of cases, your opponent may think it's a good idea to let if they have a counter spell, they might let Iron Crag Feet resolve in order for you to then try to cast the second spell, and then they would counter that, and basically they're two for one in you, right? But if we cast Iron Crag Feet and then we play Chandra Awakened Inferno, we're getting a lot of value because this is uncounterable and it gives us a ton of value on the field immediately, right? We can put damage in on our opponent every turn from there on out. And this can sweep the board, it can just remove one big threat, whether it's a planeswalker or a creature. And this is going to do a lot for us, and if we can get this out on turn four, that would be very nice. So we're running four copies of that in here. Um, I'm a little bit in interested in maybe running, uh, just like cutting this down to three and doing some other things, but I haven't tested this deck a whole lot, okay? I haven't tested this deck a whole lot. It could be really bad. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. And if you have suggestions for what else you could do with this, drop them in the comments below. I do read those, and I will appreciate any feedback. So some other things we're doing. We've got a new spell that I wanted to kind of throw in here. I don't know how well it's going to work for us, but it might be nice. This is a 7-mana red sorcery it's called Sundering Stroke. And Sundering Stroke deals 7 damage divided as you choose among 1, 2, or 3 targets. If at least 7 red mana was spent to cast a spell, instead, Sundering Stroke deals... 7 damage to each of those permanents and or players. This is very important because if we cast Iron Crag Feet and then Sundering Stroke, this is going to be dealing 7 damage to 3 different targets. That'll probably be 7, seven to the opponent, 7 to a Planeswalker, and 7 to a creature, or some, some other thing like that. This is a really good way to remove big creatures where in red we don't normally have a good way to do that. So if we're going up against like Stompy or something, our, our little removal spells like Shock and Lava Coil and Flame Sweep aren't going to do much for us, but Sundering Stroke can. So this is actually going to be super important for us. I, I threw in one mirror march because I thought it would be nice to have another option to, to capitalize on our big creatures, whether it's Dracoseth Maw of Flames, which is the obvious choice. We would love to have mirror march down when we play our Dracoseth, but it's also good for Skargan Hellkite, Cavalier of Flame, and other stuff that we're doing. So 
I do like Mirror March, but I'm only going to put one in here because it's very costly and there's not a ton of payoff all the time because it is random, if you recall. Okay, so other things we're playing. We're running three Skargon Hellkite. There's a lot of value in five mana. Um, it, because we have a lot of dragons here, we're going Skargon Hellkite and uh, Dracoseth Maw of Flames. We're also going to be running Sark in the Masterless. He um, makes both our dragons more more better that's not how you're supposed to say that he, he gets more value out of our dragons and out of our chandra because he can turn her into a dragon as well um so other things we're playing on the on the front end we got two amplifiers in here just because we have a lot of big creatures <laughs> dracus at maw of flames this is going to be getting big most of the time we have it on the field it's going to be a big threat and then i only played two practice games and they went well so i'm hoping these, this video will go well but amplifier was actually kind of an all-star in those matchups um bone crusher giant is amazing this card is so good um i think this is going to be really really good in a lot of decks but it's really good for us because a it functions as removal obviously it's not the most efficient um it is efficient in terms of cards but not in terms of mana right stomp the instant adventure i like that that's instant speed it makes it way better um, damage can't be prevented this turn stomp deals two damage to any target that's really nice really nice and whenever bone crusher giant becomes the target of a spell bone crusher giant deals two damage to that spell's controller so if your opponent tries to remove bone crusher that's going to be an issue for them because it's going to be dealing them a little bit of damage but this is also four three for three with some upsides to it so this is a really really good creature it's great i there's no reason why you wouldn't run this unless you're just making a budget build in which case this may be a little expensive i don't know the price of this card in terms of removal we got shocks lava coil flame sweep your kind of usual stuff flame sweep is really really good uh don't leave home without it i think um i've only got three because i want to have four shocks and two lava coils and i didn't really have room for more you may want to run a fourth but i really doubt it because it's not going to do us any good in a lot of matchups so it's a bit risky okay i know i've been talking for a while but we got a lot of new cards to cover so we're going dwarven mine we got four dwarven mines in this deck when dwarven mine enters the battlefield tapped wait dwarven mine enters the battlefield tapped unless you control three or more three or more other mountains uh, and whenever Dwarven Mine enters the battlefield untapped, create a 1-1 one, one red dwarf creature token. This card is actually really good in this. In any mono red deck that's playing a lot of mountains, this is going to be pretty nice. The only issue is if you start the game with one or more of these in your hand, that can be uh, a bit of a bummer because you're just it's going to come in tapped and not give you any value, right? Because it's, normally tap lands are going to be multicolored and you get extra value out of those. But this one doesn't do us any good when it comes in tapped. So we want to be holding these until we have three other mountains on the field, if at all possible. Sometimes it's not possible. You just got to get the land out on your turn three. But, you know, um, this is actually pretty good because not only is there like it doesn't come in tapped if we already have three mountains, but it gives us a one one, which is just a nice blocker. And, and we kind of are going to need that against a lot of the kind of the aggro or go wide things. I've seen I've seen a lot of knights. I've seen some uh, Celestia go wide stuff with Ajani and, and Lovestruck Beast. So uh, this is going to be good for just putting out blockers until we can hit our super valuable spells, like uh, our five mana spells or our Iron Crag feet into bigger stuff. So uh, Castle Embereth is also a good option. I've only got two of it because it's not a mountain and it's going to stunt us um, if we play this early, of course. It will most of the time be coming in untapped, which is nice, but it is not a mountain card. It's a it's a non-basic land, um, but the, the upside is that we can spend three mana, tap it, and creature we control get plus one plus zero until end of turn. For this deck, this is not super valuable, so that's why I'm only running two, but I wanted to play it because it's new and, and could potentially uh, be nice, but really, for the most part, this is not great. Mostly, we just need mountains, and Dwarven Mine is pretty nice, so okay. I'm done talking, that was a lot. I was probably talking way too fast for you to understand, so if you wanna slow this video down or do whatever, <laughs> uh, you know, let me know if I'm talking too fast in the comments below. I have heard that before, and I'm sorry, I just wanted to get through this deck tech as fast as possible. Now, let us jump into some actual gameplay, and there's a sneak peek right there, uh, real quick, of what I'll be playing in the future. So my future videos will probably be some Knights videos, a couple different versions of Knights probably. I've got Boros along the, uh, coming up. I've got Orzhov, I've got Mono Black and Mono Red Knights, all of those. And then we've got Mono White Life Weenies probably. Some cool, um, I think, discard stuff with Glinthorn Buccaneer and Arclight Phoenix. So I'm very excited about that. It's going to be pretty cool. It's Yojimbo. Let's do this thing. Okay, so we've got Castle Embereth, 
couple of mountains. Not bad, not bad at all. So we got a shock and a bone crusher giant and a flame sweep. So we've got our removal. We've got our big, big threat here. So now we've got two Chandras. That's not the best. But we will see if we can get an Iron Crag feat. Okay, looking like, is it interesting? <clears throat> this is actually the deck, basically the deck that I was just talking about. I think this is going to be kind of an Arclight Phoenix sort of um, discard, discarding cards and drawing cards deck. Maybe even Glinthorn Buccaneer will be thrown in there for some extra value, but probably, um, what is it called? Iron Crag Pyromancer, I think, um, is going to be good for this. So, yep, pretty easy to get some some fairies. Is it flyers? Uh, we'll pass the turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ah. Let's go ahead and play Castle Embereth. And I'm going to pass the turn. I'm going to see what they do here. I'm assuming they're going to start drawing, st discarding a drawing to get a bunch of fairies on the field. And that's fine because I'll just flame sweep them all to death. Resolve. Yeah, I'm going to take the one damage here. I really don't mind that at all. And I'm actually going to... Yeah, I think I'm actually going to Bone Crusher. Uh, I'm going to stomp them. Keep the fairies on the field. Go to my turn. Okay, we've got an Amplifier. This is going to come in uh, tapped, unfortunately. That's kind of sad, but I'm then going to just play Bone Crusher Giant now to get a threat on the field. So they're going to have to hold blockers back or remove Bone Crusher Giant, which any removal on Bone Crusher Giant is going to cost them some damage, so that's fine for us. But now we're at the point... Okay, there there she is, Iron Crag Pyromancer. Sundering Stroke, eh? Let's attack... deal some damage and now I'm going to actually flame sweep and then shock the pyromancer so they can't deal me a ton of damage <clears throat> so we own the board and I'm hoping to draw into an iron crag feat here so we can get Chandra down um, but if not I'll settle for amplifier yes baby there it is okay here we go let's um, let's attack first See what we need to do. Okay. Iron Crag feet. We go Chandra Awakened Inferno. And I'm actually going to minus four. And go ahead and kill her. So I could have put uh, I could have put her emblem on the field, but I think it's better to go ahead and kill that. So she can't deal, like, kill my Bone Crusher or my Chandra. Though I'm a little scared they're going to have removal for her. Oh, Crackling Drake? Pfft, we don't care about that. That's, that's no problem at all. <laughs> We've got another Iron Crag feat and a Sundering Stroke to play. Okay, uh, let's do this. Let's first of all do that. Then I'm going to attack, see if they block. If they don't block, I win, right? I think they probably block, but if they don't, I win. Double blocking, huh? Interesting. That's fine. Yeah, that's really okay. Um, yeah, I'll do that. And then I'm actually gonna wait. What? Did I do that wrong? Oh, I did that wrong. Oops. No, I'm so stupid. I order. I didn't order those correctly. Ah, I could have killed Crackling Drake. What is wrong with me? <laughs> that's so dumb. I was I was moving too quickly through that. And I should have done it better. Okay, so they're going to make a bunch of fairies here. And if they're smart, they'll attack Chandra so I can't just sweep their fairies away. Though, I will say I'm pretty... Okay, no. They... Nice. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we're going to do that. I do have to watch out, though, that they don't kill me. Uh next turn so they block this that's fine no worries so I can iron crag feet 
and then kill yeah okay we're gonna do this well iron crag cast sundering stroke and we get the bonus so we go seven there seven there seven there wait if at least seven red mana was spent to cast a spell instead okay if you ca if you pay seven red mana to cast it yeah we do that we paid seven so it kills them okay cool cool, cool. i just that was a little bit goofy how how arena did that but i i mean we're fine we should win now that was that was so awesome iron crab feed is the best and it's not the best it's it's pretty good it's been good in this matchup there's pretty much nothing they can do to me right i'm right about that yeah i've got two chandra emblems on them all they have to do is uh not kill me next turn yeah okay cool yeah baby we did it all righty i like oh that was bright i like that i like that a lot all right let's go back into it play at least one more game so you see how the deck is working that was perfect honestly uh the the good thing was their deck was just slow enough for us to get going and they were not running counter spells which is always good so we were able to get our big spells out three mountains bone crusher giant flames this is this is good hand i feel like every hand i see in this deck is good anytime you've got bone crusher giant it's fine <laughs> you've got removal and a threat all in one card so good okay we've got chandra so if we ever draw iron crag feet excuse me we will be good to go once upon a time Ooh, i forget about once upon a time that is that is a good card it's pretty good okay pelt collector okay so they're going jund i'm gonna pass the turn i'll probably bone crusher giant i'll probably stomp their pelt collector but i want to see what they play here see maybe it's like a they got three mana what are they gonna what are they gonna play Rotting Regisaur or something? Gruel Spellbreaker? Oh, obviously, yeah, that's good. Okay. And we'll go ahead and stomp that. <coughs> and now Bone Crusher Giant. We've got a, you know, evenly matched here. If they attack, I think I probably don't block. I, I'm willing to take four damage. I'm gonna get an amplifier down next turn, or potentially if I top deck Iron Crag feet, that would be nice as well. Paradise Druid and a puck. Why did you you did that out of order, sir? Why did they not play Pelt Collector first? That makes no sense, but whatever. Okay. Huh. I could. I think I just oh ooh ah Okay. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna attack. I'm gonna see if they block. I don't think they'll block this. Really? Okay. I shouldn't have done what I did. But this is fine. This is super fine. <coughs> Yeah, I'll resolve that. I don't mind him getting a little bit big right now. Um, I'll just Amplifier. So what I should have done, I was pretty stupid there. What I should have done was immediately, I should have Flame Sweeped and then shot the Gruul Spellbreaker. I would have controlled the board. But I didn't do that. So now they get a Questing Beast. Pelt Collector gets strong. He can attack me. Um, but the good news is, I can now, I can do the same play. Hmm, bummer. I can do almost the same play this turn. <laughs> yeah, we'll stomp questing beast. I'm I'm fine with pelt collector becoming a four four. It's not that big of a deal. I'm dealing them eight damage this turn. 
and I would be very surprised if they're able to do a bunch of damage to me next turn. They could they could have removal for Amplifier, might, might be like an Assassin's Trophy or something. If they have Assassin's Trophy, that's fine because that will give me my 6th Mountain so I can play Chandra Awakened Inferno. Domri Anarch of Bolas, that's not ideal. It's not the worst thing. Okay, well, they're done. Yeah, baby. Mmm. <laughs> Amplifier is so good in this deck. It's really, really good. I, I mean, like, we've got it to where we've got it to where any creature that it, it pulls up, besides itself, if it pulled up another, like if it if it hit another uh, amplifier in there would be that'd be a bummer. But uh, anything else is really, really solid. Okay, here we go. One more game. So far it's going really, really well. I'm I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased with the performance of this deck so far. Uh, I don't I don't think this is gonna hold up. I, I don't know. I'm not convinced that this deck is going to play consistently, you know? Um, okay, I'll keep seven. This is fine. <laughs> Every time there's a Bone Crusher Giant, it's good. We also have Iron Crag Feet, so if we top deck Dracoseth or Chandra, nice. Ooh, Mirror March. That's, that's great. I'm expecting... So I see blue first. I'm expecting... Oh, okay. This is probably... Is it discard stuff, right? Let's let's stomp their face, and then I'll play Bone Crusher Giant on my turn. Go ahead and get this bad boy started. So once we uh, oh, Fairy Vandal. Okay, that's fine. So the, yeah, they're doing the they're doing the like when you draw your second card kind of deck, and that's okay. Iron Crag Pyromancer. That's chill with me. Ooh ooh. Okay, so we go Iron Crag Feet. Mirror March. Okay, this might be stupid, but I really wanted to do that. So Iron Crag Pyromancer is going to be able to kill Bone Crusher Giant, but I think ah that might be so dumb. Ugh. Royal Scions. Yeah. Yikes. That, yeah, that's. I mean, they're good. Royal Scions is good. Hmm. Surprised they didn't. Oh, I guess they probably drew that then. Shoot, man. Okay, well, we'll lava coil you. So you can't uh, do your thing anymore. Let's. I'll pass the turn and see what they do. I really don't want to double shock the fairy vandal. Dang, yeah. Okay, before that occurs, I'm gonna double shock their Pyromancer. Which feels so bad. Oh, that feels bad. I enjoyed the proper application of knowledge. Yikes. Okay, well. This is Hmm. Okay, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna play Amplifier now. Um, maybe we get an extra one Amplifier. <laughs> nice! Okay, this is gonna be better next turn. Amplifier does not play well with Mirror March. But, you know what does play well with Mirror March is maybe Bone Crusher Giant if we get a bunch of them. Um, but the good news is they don't have an Iron Crag Pyromancer on the field to destroy me right now. Fairy Vandal's getting big. No, dang it! That sucks. Your heart can overcome any challenge. Please tell me I don't lose right now, right? No, but they get extra damage. Wait, no, they don't. They already put a counter on that. I am dumb. Okay, I go to seven, which means. Yeah, that pretty much means I die next turn. Jeez. Okay. Well, uh, the only way I can win is if I <laughs> if I get like twenty copies of Bone Crusher Giant. So here we go, baby. 
Come on. How many copies can we get? Two is something. Hey, that's more than zero. I think we still lose, though. Um, if they didn't block... Is there a way to not lose, right? They can attack. I mean, that's really the only thing we can do that's good. But they block one, and then they're going to probably do... Yeah, uh, I, I'm done. I'm dead. Right, they attack with Dreadhorde Arcanist. They shock me. That's a good game. <coughs> well, folks, it was a good run. It was a good run. I do like the deck. It's kind of bad. It's kind of meme -y, but it's fun, right? No blocks. What are we going to do? Um, I do like I do like this the Rowan Planeswalker deck so far. I don't know. I've seen that twice now, so I don't know. Uh, let's take a quick look at the deck. What would I change about it? Potentially try to find an alternative to Amplifier uh, because it doesn't go great with everything in this deck. Or, or alternatively, I get our, get rid of Mirror March and put in maybe like another big creature. I'm not sure exactly how to how to play this completely. I feel like we don't have as many big spells as I would like. You know, we lost Banefire. We lost. Um, did we lose anything else, really? I mean, we've got, we've got a couple. We lost a bunch of dragons. We lost the, the Dragon Queen, Lathless Dragon Queen. So, anyway, uh, if you have suggestions for this deck, though, drop them below. I'm going to have the deck list in the description of this video. And uh, I think that's it that I all need to say. Uh, if you are not subscribed to me, please consider doing so, so you get more wonderful content like this. Um, I hope you guys enjoy Throne of Eldraine when it's out for y'all. It should be next couple of days i don't remember i don't know when this video is going to go up but yeah baby all right uh that's it for me see you guys next time <laughs>